Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. So finally getting around to a video on the Olight M2R Warrior. Uh, this light came out a couple months ago. Um, got the light a couple months ago. Probably should have done a video then. But been busy, didn't really get around to the video. And so here we are. Um, the good news is, in the meantime, I have used this light quite extensively. Um, you know, as far as like a daily carry, using it at night. Um, so there's certainly some things that I like about the light. And we'll get into it. Um, here's what it ships with, you know, inside the box you have um, the magnetic charging cap, um, I think it came with a lanyard, some other stuff. I don't really use any of that junk, obviously the charger I do, but also came with the battery. This is the neutral white version. Here's some of the different specs, um, latest LED, 208 meter throw. Um, I was out in a field at night, that sounds about right, but... I didn't, you know, use a range finder or measure the distance, but it seems like what it was. Um, so IPX8 water resistant, those are the length and the specs and so forth, uh, the weight. I mean, you guys can see all this stuff just on the website. Um, you know, as far as pocket carry goes, I've got a couple different size comparisons, you know, namely the, what is the MX-1 Striker, the Striker also from Olight. Um, you know, pretty much the exact same size, a little bit older model. This one runs at 1,000 lumen. This one's 1,500. The user interface is certainly different. Pocket clips are different. Tail caps are different. Um, let me show you guys a couple more size comparisons real quick. This is probably the most universal. What is this? The Streamlight Stylus Pro. So, I don't know, most of you guys probably have this light or have had it at some point. Uh, Surefire Titan Plus. Um, significantly smaller light. Obviously a lot more pocket friendly. Let's get these centered. Uh, this is the 47's Prion P1 in copper, I think. Um, then a few custom flashlights. Boss 35 by Overready. Barrel Flashlight Co. I don't think it has a model name, whatever that is. So, anyways, there is a lineup of various lights. So, with that out of the way, let's move all this stuff. And I'll kind of do it head-to-head -head with the MX-1 Striker here since they are so comparable. Now, price point, um, as of recording of this video, January 2018, these are still 100 bucks, which is the price they came out at a couple months ago. The MX-1 Strikers can be had for about 60 bucks now, so a $40 price differential. Again, you know, 500 lumen different output and um, the user interface is different. So let's talk about the user interface on the M2R Warrior here. So it's a tactical model, and the reason they, I guess, label it as a tactical model is because of the tail switch at the back here. When you hit it, it goes straight to, you know, full brightness, which is 1500 lumens, or you can have it go into strobe. The tail cap is quiet. Let me put it next to the mic. As compared to the MX-1 Striker, so you know they view the the fact that tail cap is quiet as kind of a tactical feature, and then going you know straight into max output is again another tactical feature. Um, I have it go to max output. I really have no interest in strobe. I, I think it's an overrated feature on flashlights, and I don't really think it has any tactical advantage. Um, you know, most gunfights are three seconds, so the fact that you're going to somehow pull this out and go into strobe and confuse the enemy and blah blah blah, I just think it's an overrated feature and I use these as flashlights. So, anyway, so max output or strobe. And then here on the side you've got your side switch and that takes you into, you know, your low, medium, and then high. So, whatever your last mode was, your last mode was, that's what it's coming in at. So, um, you can obviously hold down, go through the different modes here. But the way that I run this is I always have my side switch on low and then you know leave my tail switch on high. And so that way if I need this thing at night, um, you know again 1500 lumens is pretty bright and when my vision is adjusted for night um, I really prefer the low you know for wandering around the house at night or if I'm out with my dog um, the low output is, is perfectly sufficient, which 
is like 15 lumens um, for the most part. So anyway, so that's how the user interface on this one works. On the MX-1 Striker, the tail switch essentially goes into whatever your last mode was. So you hit it on and then you can push the side button here to go through your different modes or hold it down and go into strobe. So again, you know, I'm always set on low um, as far as kind of my default mode and that works really well for me. So that's kind of the difference here between the two is that the side switch takes you into your last mode, the side switch on the MX-1 takes you through the different modes whereas the tail switch is the activator for it. Um, or you can, yeah, tail switch is the activator, just double checking. Now one additional benefit that Olight has um, been including in all their more recent offerings is the magnetic tail cap um, for charging purposes which honestly I think is invaluable. Um, I love that I can have this thing on my nightstand and just put my light anywhere near it and this thing charges. Now admittedly I have not recharged this light since I first got it. I got it, I plugged it in, it took like 24 hours to charge and I've just been running it since then. I have not had to recharge it and I've gone into max output at least 20 or 30 times for 30 seconds or less. So, you know, to me, that's that's pretty decent performance for my uses. Again, your mileage may vary. Um, but machining is great. The hard anodized finish um, was really well applied. There's no, you know, it's not scratching off or flaking off in any place. Little blue accents. I think the only thing that uh, makes this life this light difficult to use is the fact that at night if I'm trying to find the side switch sometimes I have to like twirl the the flash like two or three times they've got a little I guess nipple here on the button but I can't always feel that um, at night if I'm trying to do it quickly and find it so sometimes I'll pass over and it'll take two or three times to find the switch because again at night I'm really not wanting to go into 1500 lumens because uh, it throws off my night vision so you know, again, that's that's kind of a question of, um, you know, a specific tactical model versus more of like, I don't know, maybe one not necessarily developed for that purpose, although this does have the crenulated bezel, so, I don't know, maybe a better comparison is uh, something like, you know, my custom uh, Boss 35. Um, this one comes in a low red, but anyways, I mean, that's, that's just kind of my experience. Um, really happy with it. Um, it does have a one inch diameter, so you do have to dedicate some adequate pocket space, maybe considerable pocket space would be the correct term to a flashlight this big. Um, same thing with the MX-1 Striker. Um, I typically prefer a little bit smaller flashlights, but um, if I have my jeans that have like additional pockets, then it's uh, much easier to carry. So yeah, I mean, fit and finish is excellent. Um, quality, all those things. Olight's done a really good job. I have a number of their products. Um, as an interesting aside, um, after I got this, uh, I had it for maybe a week. It was on my nightstand, pointed towards my face. And I bumped my nightstand and a, a metal chain that was sitting on my on my nightstand hit the tail switch and the mag I guess the stainless steel activated the magnetized tail switch and threw on 1500 lumens right in my face in the middle of the night. That was a that was quite interesting, quite painful. Um, but you know, if you have a a metal object that you know I guess hits both sides of the tail switch, it can potentially activate it. So again, not a, a interesting aside more than anything. Um, they've also revised the pocket clip so that you can clip it either this way or this way. Um, you know, hook it to a hat or something. But all right, so that is pretty much it. Um, really nice light. Obviously, very specific function and user interface. If the interface works for you, I think you'll be really, really happy. And again, you do have to accommodate the slightly larger size. But um, well done, Olight. Uh, looking forward to uh, more offerings from them. And uh, they've, they've done a lot with the gun lights. Um, I'm, honestly, I prefer a little bit more slender light, um, maybe three quarters of an inch diameter down the line if, if they do that. Although you may not be able to use the 18650 batteries at that point. But again, neither here nor there. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. More videos to come. Um, maybe some more flashlights down the line. We'll see. Take care.